Hello, dear friends. This is Kardec Radio at 11 p.m. Nourishing our souls together. We are here today to study one of the most striking chapters of this book. Chapter 40, The Deadly Adversary. Well, we've been talking about good and evil. Many people discuss about good and evil, whether they exist or not or don't exist. Let's go to the Spirit's book by Allan Kardec. And in the Spirit's book by Allan Kardec, we have Kardec dedicating a whole section of the Spirit's book in its second part. And of course, in the other parts, there is a continuation of it, but it discusses about good and evil. And good comes from God. Everything that is good comes from God. We are not the originators of the good. And that's the beauty of it all. Why? Because we're not the inventors of the good. God is the creator of everything that is good. Right? Everything that is good. And we are co-creators. So we receive the Play-Doh of God, which is the good. And all we need to do is to work with it. It sounds very easy and it's supposed to be like that because we are nature. Not only a tree, not only an animal, not only a rock, but everything that exists in the universe is creature of God. We're creatures of God. Matter, the spiritual principle and the, the material principle, matter, they are both elements of the universe. Creation of God. So it's funny when we take many things as a evil. Evil, what is evil? Evil is simply the absence of the good. So the universe, says Andre Lewis, is expanding. And we have an opportunity to expand daily. If we try not to expand ourselves into new learning opportunities, into new loving capacity, we will be pushed to do so because we are created to expand our possibilities. This is how God created us. So whenever we block that flow of the good, it's named evil. It's the shadow right? Between the light and the shadow, good and evil, we have here an opportunity to meditate on it. Today, Jesus is going to tell us about the deadly adversary. Many people are constantly afraid in the world, and sometimes with reasons, because uh, we get to know of many things that are happening in the world, and we quite often don't understand why but what is the thing that really becomes fatal in our lives often we think it's something external to us let us see what Jesus says so welcome dear friends to Kardec Radio today you're welcome to join us in this beautiful meeting where we are cherishing new understanding in the presence of the master so let us visualize ourselves seated around master jesus breathe in and out and feel the teachings today shall we friends chapter 40 the deadly adversary during the course of the evening refreshed by caressing breezes philip with his calloused hands spoke so emotionally and bitterly about the angst that filled his soul that heart-trending notes of pain gripped the gathering. And after being asked respectfully by Peter that they return to the problem of temptation, the master began the following story. Remember in the previous chapter, yesterday, the power of darkness, right? We have two lessons that are addressing precisely the same issues. The choices in life. 
right? Temptation is about a choice that we make. We may make this choice or that choice. It's about the use of freedom. It's about the power of our choices. And as Philip, who works very hard and is opening his soul to the pains and sorrows, Jesus then told the story. The Lord, our Father, needed a small group of servants in a rebellious and dissolute city. And to that end, he found in the middle of it a family of five. Father, mother, and three children. All who loved him and honored his wise and just laws. Once they were situated, the happy collaborators began to serve him wholeheartedly. They found they found an active center of charity and transforming faith that proved its worth as an important sower of heavenly life, and it stood out so much in its devotion and practice of goodness that the spirit of the darkness began to wage a tenacious, tenacious war against it. Ouch. To begin with it, the spirit of darkness flailed it with the bats of slander. But the sincere servants united in tolerance and triumphed. Immediately thereafter, he spread the gloom of poverty around them. But the dedicated workers joined together in incessant work and overcame the hardship. Then he tormented them with the serpents of scandal. However, the unknown heroes responded with constructive silence and defeated the dark persecutor. After other similar sieges, Satan changed his plan of attack and sent them the demons of vanity which clothed, clothed the Lord's faithful servants with great social status, as if they had reached the pinnacles of power in the blink of an eye. Nonetheless, the provident workers were even more humble and attributed all the glory bestowed on them to the Heavenly Father. Next, contemptuous and wicked beings filled their center with valuable assets and money in order to benumb their ability to work. But strong in trust and prayer, the loving group received the money and gifts and passed them on to the others to the benefit of the down downtrodden and afflicted. Exasperated, the spirit of darkness sent them the demon of depression. Whoever so subtly reached the mind of the head of the heroic family and said to him solemnly, You are a man, not an angel. Aren't you ashamed of yourself for constantly talking about the Lord when you know your own imperfection so well? More than anything else, try to feel the extent of your weaknesses of the flesh. Weep about your shortcomings. Do penitence before the Eternal One. Grieve your sins. Your sins. Minding this warning, the unfortunate man became alarmed and forgot that people can only be useful to the grandeur of the Father through their work in carrying out the will of heaven and succumbing to profound depression. He believed himself to be irredeemably blameworthy and sinful forever. From the moment in which he believed he was incapable of getting back on his feet, he refused to eat. He lay down and died 
from sorrow in just a few days. Seeing him die under a wave of sorrows and tears, his wife followed in his footsteps, overcome by unspeakable anguish. And within a few weeks, the children took the same pathway. And so, the deadly adversary overcame the valiant collaborators of faith and love one by one without needing any other weapon than the little suggestion of sadness. The Lord remained silent for quite a while, but none of those present dared make a comment. Thus, perceiving that his disciples preferred to remain silent, the divine friend make a comment. concluded expressively. As long as people have the resources to work and serve with their hands and feet and with their sentiments and intelligence, the destructive sadness surrounding them is nothing more than a threatening visit from the spirit of darkness in his wretched and persistent battle against the light. Are you shocked? The spirit of darkness, the strategy. First of all, let's go from the end then to the beginning. He says, the wretched and persistent battle against the light. So we need to pay attention. As students in life, you and I are being taught by Jesus in unprecedented ways. And we need to make our notes. Little children, in the cartoons, you often see the battle of good and evil. And that's good. You know why? Because that's life. And it will by, be like this for a long time. When we are too young, we can't understand it. It's very disturbing but when we grow mature we're able to face it understand it and make choice so first note for us today of the lesson of Jesus number one ignorance exists inexperience exists which means evil exists forever no but it exists. Two, the spirit of darkness is always going to try to battle against the light. Why? We need another study on another day to talk about it. If we go to the book Heaven and Hell by Allan Kardec, we'll see also the discussion on good and evil. So for us, Inevitably, it's a phenomenon of life. We were born to expand. We need to work on it. Law of work. Mm -hmm. But there's a law of freedom. We need to make a choice. The other thing that Jesus tells us here, the striking the most effective strategy of the forces of darkness sadness they whisper sadness putting us down the same lesson of yesterday repeated from a different angle in the previous chapter we've got Jesus addressing this, talking about the power of darkness. And then, if it's not enough, Neil Lucio reports another day in which Jesus repeated the lesson for all of us. Let us remember, friends, this message is the good news. Jesus is sharing good news. And you may be asking, but Vanessa, how is this 
Good news, right? How is this good at all? Well, it's good because he's making us aware. Jesus is empowering us. He's saying, don't be afraid. Don't listen to this voice that comes to you and says, who are you? You are nobody. You have your shortcomings. And then we would reply, who doesn't? Can you tell me who doesn't? Right? Exactly, Carol. Awareness is liberating. So you and I, we are today receiving again another lesson. The worst adversary is that voice telling us, you're guilty, you're bad, who are you? And we can only reply by saying, I am a co-creator. So are you. So do you want to keep co-creating in this way? We can reply to these forces saying, you're better than this. You are also children of God. Obsessors, spirits of low caliber, they won't stay like this forever. So, we are children of the light. And ignorance tries to create obstacles for our expansion. But it's easy to feel it when we are the victims. But let us be sincere here. Huh? We wish all of us were victims of somebody out there. The problem is when we are the very voices of sadness. When we look at a family member who wants to do the work of the good, and we turn to that family member and say, Oh, you want to help others, but what about helping me at home? Is that a good voice to others? What about at work, when a colleague has a beautiful idea, and out of envy, jealousy, we try to discourage people from supporting that idea and unfortunately friends we have to say even in the spiritist movement we see this right great ideas being spread out and the fear and other elements of jealousy envy spite trying to put people down we need to support each other in the works of the good the good doesn't have limits. And when we discourage someone, as Jesus said in a previous message, we are committing a huge crime. That is precisely what Jesus says in another chapter for us that we have already studied in the book, Jesus in the Home. Neil Lucer reports that there was a man who was constantly discouraging people from doing good works. When he discarnated, he was found in the valley of murderers. And he found out that by discouraging people to do the good, he was actually incurring in great crime. Right? Lea Severo is kindly sharing with us in the Gospel According to Spiritism, in its, small, its the largest chapter, chapter 5, Blessed are the Afflicted, Item 25, we have a beautiful message. Thank you, Leah. You're right about melancholy. The Spirit's teaching, exactly. And what are they saying in that message? Believe me, says the Spirit. Do not give in to melancholy. Why? Because it weakens our will. And will is the driving force of the soul. So let's go back to Jesus here. So let us go through the tests of life. Huh? 
So the minute you are devoted, doing the good, the spirit of darkness is going to try to block your pathway. That's the way it is. So they create slander. Okay, that's number one. What do we do to triumph, tolerate, keep working nonstop? Poverty, lack of material resources, keep working and need to overcome. Scandal, right? Stay in silence and as uh, somebody said once, time and work will silence every bit of scandal that is created out there. And then he creates vanity, which is already happening in the world, even in the spiritist movement. We see many people that are really worked up in the vanity, forgetting about the people who need help to just be on the surface of it all, showing off. We need to be careful about it, very, very careful. Remember, I once met a, a person who was a spiritist, came to the United States, and in the spiritist side of Virginia, we had a, a Muslim friend who was visiting us and working with us in the study sessions, and she had cancer, and she wanted to talk to that speaker, but needed translation. And I was able to translate the counseling session, and I say fraternal assistance, right? After the talk. But then when we got home, that speaker told me, never do that again. I'm not here to do counseling. I'm not here to help people. I'm just here to give a talk. I mean, is this really why we do this work? Is that what Jesus recommended to us? That we simply talk to people at large, but do not focus on the one-on-one? -on -one? Let us meditate on this, right? As Gabriel Inácio is saying, we need always to support each other. Right, Gabriel, we all need to learn to support each other. And he says here, in a way, then, Financial uh, resources, abundance may also create obstacles if we don't watch out. But then if it's not enough, let us listen to this, exasperated. The spirit of darkness sent them the demon of depression. Tonight, at the Spirit Society of Virginia in our mediumistic meeting, we had the spirit who came and was telling us, about how tired he was of creating obstacles to the works of the good. And when the counselor proposed help, he started talking very, um, in a lower voice, and saying, I'm tired, tired of being beaten up by those who ask me to come and destroy the works of the good. I need help. For us, we need to have compassion for the spirits who create problems. First, because they don't know what they're doing, and second, because deep inside, they are also suffering. Another spirit came along and shared that he didn't want to stop drinking through the people he was drinking. He liked the, sen the sensations of drinking and the pleasures that came from it. And then when the counselor kept talking to, to this spirit, at a certain point, there was a shift in the heart and the spirit started crying and saying, I actually miss so much my mother because when I was young, she often said that there was an inconvenience in her life of pleasures. So she constantly shooed me away. 
until one day when I turned 15, I was, you know, led by her to be an apprentice in a particular way. And from there on, I started doing exactly what she did, living my life to the pleasures of the physical sensations, from drinking to sex and other things. So when we think about obsessors, we need to have compassion for them. But if we stop doing the work of the good, because we doubt the power of the good, or doubt our divine nature, then we won't either help ourselves or others. Like this man in this family, the minute he surrendered to that voice of darkness, sadness, he put his whole family and the community at risk. Joana de Angelis in the book Happy Life says, you are important for other people, though you don't notice it. But Vanessa, who am I? I don't know. I know you're a child of God, like I am. We are. You're important, like anybody else, without a question. Right? Mm -hmm. So for us here, we really need, as Elisa Castro is saying, I practice many times today of answering the affirmative and turning away from these negative thoughts, not only my own, but others. Thank you, Teresa, for sharing. So let us together, friends, in the next 24 hours, tell ourselves, I am a child of God, and I'm here to do the good because that's my duty. When the forces of darkness come and say, who are you to do the good? You think you're so good? I say, no, I don't. But it's my duty to do the good because God created me for this. It's dutiful. And you deserve the good. I'm going to pray for you. And pray also for the voices that try to derail us. Pray for incarnates and discarnates who try to derail you from the path. And let's have compassion. Because sooner or later, they are going to wake up and feel that they are children of God too. Right? Mm -hmm. Right, Amanda Andrade. Exactly. We all need to do this. So in the next 24 hours, what are we going to do? Repeat. A negative thought about ourselves comes along, but who are you? We say, I'm a child of God. But do you think you're so good? No, I don't. But it's my duty to do the good. It's my duty. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I reincarnated to learn to do good. But we only learn when we're doing it. Right? Right? So let us keep that in mind and pray. Let us pray now, especially for those who are temporarily being instruments of darkness, whether incarnated or discarnated, shall we? Oh, dear Master Jesus, you know our pains and sorrows. You know what we all go through. And we ask you, today especially, for the help, the rescue, the loving embrace, maternal as it can be, to all those who serve as instruments of evil. May they realize sooner than later that they are children of God. They also deserve love, peace, kindness. Please give us all strength to never give up on doing the good. And always continue humbly learning to do the good as we practice it each and every day. Thank you for sending this message through the hands of Chico Xavier and the diligent works of Neo Lucio, the loving grandfather of the spirit Celia. May we feel his loving care 
and the encouragement to greater awareness, empowering us to be a better co-creator in the universe of God. May we also be better instruments of love with you in this beautiful planet. And so be it. So friends, this is the message. Let us listen to the voice of Jesus saying, believe me, you are a child of light. And let us shine. Let us shine, let us shine, let us shine. Why? Because God wants us to do so, right? I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine. You should do the same. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. A big hug. And until tomorrow, friends, God willing.